there. Uh, two big tanks of lye in the floor. You just know they're going to spill. Hi there. Welcome back, everybody. It is time once again for Cast Iron Wednesday, where, and I say this every week too, um, a lot of the uh, smaller uh, YouTube cooking channels get together and uh, do some videos on Wednesday about cooking in cast iron. And I guess my channel is uh, one of them because I have been doing this, good grief, for a um, little more than a year now. It's a little hard to believe. Um, in that I've been doing these live videos, and I very much uh, appreciate anybody who uh, shows up, which they tend to do these days, because, well, I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> um, more importantly, of course, yes, there is going to be cast iron tonight. There is going to be quite a bit of it, in fact, because, as the title says, we I'm uh, cleaning out a lie tank tonight, or actually two lie tanks, and um, once the lie tank is empty... I'm going to fill it up again, which means that, uh, yeah, we're going to be uh, seeing a uh, fair amount of uh, cast iron tonight. Hello, Papa Dan. Hello, CIC and Jamie. The cast iron I just, nation awaits. Well, yeah, definitely this past weekend, I would say, was really uh, me succumbing to uh, cast iron itis, as you saw. Hi, Papa Dan. Oh, yeah. Hi, Bob. Jamie says hi. Um... So coming to uh, Cast Iron Itis, because as you saw with the video I posted last night, you know, it was a really fun, exciting, and, well, I guess you could say successful weekend at Brimfield. So uh, I said a lot in that video about how Brimfield is such a wonderful time, and I highly, highly recommend it to anyone, whether or not you're into this hobby of uh, doing cast iron. No matter what your interests are. They have something there. Yes, pretty they much. They have... have yeah, they have, you know, yeah, they have something to, uh, they have something to do yeah. that, so, yeah, so, uh, having said that, I guess we uh, might as well get started and uh, start cleaning things out, yeah. so, and stuff. Okay. okay, which means that, oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. which no, means, no, no, just give her help, so, okay, so the camera's gonna go down, right, yes, that's right, uh, to uh, look at those, uh, look at those right there, How's that? There we go. Uh, that's pretty good right there, actually. So yeah, that yeah, that's a pretty good view. Okay, now that that's good. So there's plenty of room there. How's that? Perfect. Pretty good. I'll just lower the boom a little bit. No, I think I think we're good. Okay. Because I don't want to uh, ruin the map here with the lie as well. Um, and three more paper bags. Um, yeah, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea either. Okay, having more paper bags, everybody. Yeah. So, having said that, let's see what we can do. This one, I found the lid came off easily because, yeah, it was a uh, Lowe's uh, bucket with a Home Depot lid. This one is a little trickier. This is, it says leak tight, and it does, and it, uh, both the lid and the bucket are from Lowe's, so presumably they fit together. And it, well, I'm, like I'm going to try this a little bit because, I, obviously, I don't want to get lie on myself. But this thing has got a pretty good Here. seal on it. So, pardon me, guys. Here. Okay. I think I'll come back to that one just to okay. be safe. Because this one, fortunately, is much easier. There we go. Um, well, again, it was uh, just a little bit more than a month ago, August 11th, in fact, uh, my grandmother's birthday, that uh, we filled these uh, tanks with lye and we popped in some cast iron. So the cast iron has been soaking in here for a month, and let's take a look and see uh, how it looks. Actually, I should probably put on both of these, just to be safe. And fishing around. What the hell? You want to mark off? No, it's empty. Nah. -uh. It is empty. There's no way. I am not kidding. Who would have came? Who would have came? I don't know. It's empty. Okay, let's not panic. Let's see what's happening with this one here. Okay. It's dark though. Yes, it is. There's. I would have to think there's still lie in this, but there's nothing in there. Okay, so let's try this one. If this one is empty, I'm going to be very, very pissed. If I, you don't mind me saying so. Who, would have, who could reach in that? 
And it was sealed cast iron. Well, okay. Let's uh, not panic. Maybe I'm... Hey, did I take in the right bucket, perhaps? Could the other one still be out there? We only had two buckets. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, well, this one is coming off. And I don't have to fucking climb anymore. No, I would have seen it on the fucking camera. Okay, hey, wait, wait, wait. Careful language. Careful language. Okay, let's see what's happening. Meanwhile, with this one, oh, why is this one having trouble coming off? All right. Well, this one's definitely also full of lye. As I can already see cast iron sticking out of the back, but... Okay. What the hell happened to the other one? Did somebody really do that? I would have seen it on cameras. All I can say is there's nothing in here. Uh, you put some in both both containers? I certainly did. We, we can even watch the videos. You know, if anything, people probably, if anything, maybe someone stopped it back on that one. Well, who knows? Well, let's see what we have here. Here, let's put, right now, let's put this on, on the floor. Ground, put this on the ground on the other side. Okay. Okay. No need to panic. You're right. Maybe somebody could have actually put the other one back in here. Who knows? But, oh yeah, because this one's pretty full now. I that was pretty that. full. Okay, good. We still have something. And you wouldn't put that like that. No, that's true. That's the paper, isn't it? Uh, it's emerald. No, it's this favorite. this is actually a Wagner. That's okay. right. I'm Here we are. Here. This is a uh, this was the uh, Wagner lid. Well, and on top of everything else, I feel like I think I actually got some lye in my glove. Come on, right, folks. It's living I'm in off a city. Great living start. in a city. Yeah, pretty well. Okay, let's not, as I said, I don't want to assume anything. However, I actually felt a little bit of burning on my hands. I think, like it or not, got a little bit of lye in my glove, and it might have affected my hand. But no, nothing too serious. It washes off. Okay. Um, that's one. Let's go back. Okay, let's see what happened. Yeah, I did, that's what Papa Dan's asking. Did you put them both in the same bucket? I... And well, if anybody wants to go over the other video, I'm pretty sure I, I put cast iron in both of these. And there is something in here anyway. So we have that one. Yep, there we go. It's leaking, is Or it's spilling over, as I expected. Cauldron's still... The cauldron is here, and it looks like it came out pretty nice. Happy about that. This cauldron uh, turned out uh, pretty nicely. Okay. Now, before we assume the worst, let me see. And it's right here. Okay. Okay. No, actually, this one. Okay, oh right? yeah, no. This is a uh, this is a Wagner. Nice. I I forgot about this one too. <laughs> this one is a Sydney, no less. Wagner Sydney. Wow. Yo, I don't. I don't even That's remember what that. I put in there. But it looks like we've got ourselves a really nice and very old Wagner here. Yeah. Let me. Uh, the emerald let me didn't show go this in. Up. That's right. No, the emerald did not That's go right. in. It could not fit in right. So, in addition to that one, uh-huh. There's the favorite. There's the favorite. Okay. okay. That's because we tell because that woman did not know how to cook with it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, it still has a lot of stuff in it, but uh, we can uh, actually uh, scrape again. that off. Really? Yeah, actually, you'll see what happens once we start scrubbing all this. Okay. I only have like of five pieces of gas iron. Oh, the the fish fryer. That was the only fish thing you fryer. had in that one. Fish fryer. The brim, the um the one that had the that we originally did in the electrolysis tank. Oh, no, I think that's over there. What there. I what I think I might be what I think I might be missing maybe is the United We Stand skillet, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, I'm not gonna panic. I'll just have to check these and find I out. What were you doing the brand new one? Yeah. So I am perplexed. No, I'm, brand new. We didn't. You wouldn't have stripped. You would have put the light thing. It's brand new. Yeah. Okay. The ones you pump. Yeah. That's okay. Um. Meanwhile, I'm wondering if somebody could do a favor and uh, scan through the uh, the live video from August 11th, just so that we could uh, see if uh, it was indeed this bucket and what went into that. Nonetheless, the show must go on. Okay, having there we go. Anyway, we've got all of this stuff here in the sink, so we've got to start scrubbing away. First thing I gotta do is get this off my hands.
Why is water soluble? So, oh, and I'm not going to die from it at least. Just a little bit of dish soap here. I mean, I definitely felt a little bit of stinging. I think I better bring the microphone a little closer now, in fact. What? I can't hear you. All right. Ah. Bring this up a little closer so you can, you can hear me much better now. I think it's going to fall over. Oh, man. Oh, well, vinegar. The vinegar is just neutralizing the lie. I think I'll be okay. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, as we were. If anybody's seen Fight Club, they would know that. Yeah, there is that. Okay, having done that, let's get these things out of the way as quickly as we can. Actually, the thing we can man, and we really could use is some barkeeper prep. So, let's start with that. There we go. And it looks like the first one we're going to be doing is that uh, old Wagner. So, let's get this out of the way. This bear is barely taking any washing at all. This thing is practically stripped clean. It's nice and easy. I like this. Okay. I can't believe I'm having a little trouble remembering where I got this. I know if I check my records, I will be I will be able to remember this. I think this was, in fact, a free market find. Nonetheless, it is a really, really nice find. Very old and thin white uh, wax. Whoops, it's too hot now. There we go. Yeah, my hands feel fine. So, nothing to worry about here. All it takes is a little bit of scrubbing now. I'm trying to figure out what was in that other tank and how could it have disappeared? Did somebody actually reach into it? Uh, that would be terrible. Nonetheless, uh, All right, having done this, we get to step two, which is we have to give this a quick towel dry and then very quickly coat it with, uh, with Crisco. Oh, great, I got this out of the way here. Oh, I only have so much room, unfortunately. <sighs> this makes me worried now about how I'm going to be able to... Uh, clean up my the new cast iron if there's a possibility it could be stolen. So um, no not yet. I don't know who's having the tougher job, me cleaning this or her herding the cats. I'm not herding cats. No, no, herd, H-E-R-D. Oh, okay. You know, like, like herding, herding yeah. cats. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Stay away from that trouble. Sorry, that yell was... Come on, guys. Run. Oh, yes. As you can see, this is just typical live here on YouTube. Isn't this fun? Yeah. Anyway, what I'm doing now, again, is giving this a nice thick coating of Crisco. This is not going to be seasoned, or at least not yet. This is really just to put a layer on the uh, pan to prevent oxidation and especially to prevent flash rust, which is oxidation, yes. <laughs> uh, this way, I can actually set this down and clean the next one. And this should not get any flash rust. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's, it's a nice pan here, and I'm definitely looking forward to cleaning this one up. Not sure what I'm going to use it for. This one may very well be a giveaway, in fact. I 
tell me. Wonder if someone actually was poking around our yard. And they might have actually just that opened up that tank, saw a piece of cast, saw a piece of cast iron in it, and thought either they could sell it or might you even just want to use it. Who knows? Nonetheless, at least the important ones do not seem to have been touched. There we go. I'll be sure to get every inch of this, including the handle. Nonetheless, there is one. Here it is. A Wagner Sydney or Sydney Wagner. And uh, examining it closely, I do not see any cracks. Thank goodness. So we are good. That's one. It is a spinner, though. It is kind of warped. But on the other hand, for something like that, I don't think that's a really big deal. Now for the favorite. Let's get this thing going. Oops. Great. Yeah, we just want to knock it around, don't we? No, no actually, we don't. So for this one, let's decide quickly. And let's get out our trusty steel wool. Oh, I see. I think this may actually have some um, sulfur pitting on the on the bottom. So, if that's the case, that is permanent uh, damage. This happens with a lot of cast iron, of vintage cast iron. But it's not a, it's not a, doesn't make it worth it. around here still have some residue. I may actually have to put this back in the tank. Nonetheless, yeah, definitely there's sulfur pitting on the bottom here. Still, after a month in the lie, let's see, this is not so bad. Let's see how it looks right now. And what we have here is a favorite and definitely this is sulfur pitting here on the inside permanent damage means that at some point in the past this was used on a stove that either was an old gas stove or maybe even wood burning or coal burning and the uh, gas and the uh, coals in the old days actually did release a lot of sulfur the sulfur reacted with the iron and actually dissolved it so as a result, this has literally been eaten away. However, the cooking surface is pristine, and that means it can still be used. So this would hardly be considered, you know, you could not sell this thing at full price, whatever you were going to sell it for. But as I said, on one hand, this would make a great user. On the other hand, even at a discount, could very well... Um, it would not be bad, um, just that. I could probably even sell it at a uh, fairly decent price. Let me rinse, let me try scrubbing a little more residue around the inside. Oh, it's coming off. Good. That's why I did a better job than I thought. Okay, so it is. I keep the edges here. It's all coming right off. Nice. Anyway, this thing definitely has a nice pristine surface on the inside. Favorite cans 
really rival Griswold as far as having incredibly smooth surfaces. They are one of the hidden gems of uh, vintage cookware. And anyone who uh, owns and uses a favorite will certainly say the same thing. Here we are. This out of the way so that it can. Okay. So this is number two. And this means that you know, definitely, if and when I clean up my next batch of stuff in the live tank, I'm going to have to uh, keep it more hidden. Probably, actually, I'm betting that seal might have been why. Probably they couldn't open it, and so they couldn't get inside it, which is a good thing. All right, now I better quickly coat this one with uh, Crisco. Where did I put that rag? There it is. All right, while we're waiting, let me check a couple of these comments here. I apologize. I do not remember a silver bucket. Uh, I thought I used one Lowe's and one um, Home Depot bucket. The silver bucket would be the Lowe's. Did I actually take in the wrong, wrong bucket, I wonder? Maybe, um, like I said, maybe somebody could uh, check the other video and verify that. Either way, oh. Papa Dan, he's checking the other video. Okay. Just out of my live tank, number nine, Eerie Slant logo skillet. Well, congratulations for you, uh, Volker, uh, Volker's Garage. Uh, and Clico, you did an unboxing of a new lodge pan after a 24 hour soap with a Lowe's bucket. Okay. So, okay. That was an unboxing. But. The question is, did I put anything back into that bucket? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little stumped. I could be panicking, which I have been known to do. And if I am, well, then, as long as nothing's missing, then that's actually no big deal. You know, I'm being, doing my best to be optimistic here. Nonetheless, and Papa Dan, thank you for checking. Uh, for the record, it should almost certainly come at least in the halfway point of the video or maybe even after that. Okay, here it is. So, Okay, we are just about done coating this one as well. This actually did turn out pretty nicely, although I should definitely show Jamie. Jamie, are you listening? Well, actually, I need to show you something about this favorite. Uh, no, actually. However, the uh, bottom of the pan is damaged. Well, no. Take a look. Oh, yeah. Pitted like motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Right in my language. Sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, it is pitted, yes. Uh, yeah, because, again, in the old days, we're talking like the early 20th oh, century. Fire. Um, Yeah, that or gas stoves or coal that had a lot of sulfur in them. And the sulfur reacted with the iron and actually dissolved it. So, wow. However, on the other hand, this can still be used. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to point that out to you to show that, well, that's what happened. And that's, yeah, really, well, uh, this happened decades this before. Now you can see what's his favorite. Oh, yeah. This happened decades before. Uh, hands on it. Yes, exactly. Oh, trouble. So, so it's not, so it's really nobody's All right. fault. All right. Okay. Anyway, that's number two. That's the favorite. Here. Where's the... Say hi. <laughs> Shit. You want to see trouble? He's trouble. Nothing but trouble. Oh, yeah. Got, yeah. Trouble. These guys here are very familiar with our friend Trouble, yes. <laughs> All right. Now, having done that, let's move on to the third one, which is another Wagner. This one is the Wagner Skillet Lid. Oops. 
and bump that, why don't we? All right, let's get this thing going. And incidentally, I should, once again, if we don't know already, I am using Barkeeper's Friend, which could very well be called Cast Iron Cook's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend is a wonderful cleaner, wonderful stain remover, and a wonderful rust remover. It will eat at least light rust. It uh, will take care of surface rust like nothing and is outstanding for cleaning up cast iron in this manner. You can't use it, of course, to wash, you know, wash uh, everyday cast iron that's already been seasoned, but for uh, cleaning up uh, old cast iron like this, Barkeeper's Friend is terrific. Uh, if you don't have some already, get it. It's like, what, $2 at uh, pretty much any uh, big store? You, it does smell, though. It does have its own distinct odor. But you will not regret using this stuff when it comes to uh, cleaning up old rusty cast iron. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, let's do this. And so far, the, the light tank has cleaned three out of three. All of these, pretty much the whole thing is completely stripped and ready to be seasoned. So I'm looking forward to doing that after I get the other stuff back into the line. All right, having done all that, the edges in particular. Okay, here we go. That's the next one all done, which means now, once again, give it just a quick towel dry. This does not have to be bone dry. And then we will coat it with uh, Crisco. We'll also put it on the burner on the stove. That's why it does not have to be bone dry, because it will. Uh, the rest of the water will evaporate. The uh, Crisco will still be there, but... Uh, any additional water, especially in the, you know, in the cracks or pores on the surface, the water will uh, evaporate and so there will not be any residual rust after that. All right. Only disadvantage is this has to be done pretty quickly. Boy, this has got a nice smooth surface. <laughs> but then again, that's one reason why a lot of people love Wagner. Of course, Wagner also had a good reputation. That's why Wagner and Griswold are everywhere when you look for vintage cast iron. And always, almost always, at ridiculous prices. I say almost always because I paid $5 for this lid. Because, of course, the seller had no idea what he was selling. He thought it was a, some old cast iron pan. And so was just, he was just selling it for, for $5. All right. Now let's go again. with the uh, Crisco, and then when, once that's done, I'll take a couple of minutes, check these comments, and then we can move on to step two. And especially since we are already 30 minutes in, that's not doing too badly, I think. So, all right, having done this, because the other part of the, this video that I promised, is that we're going to be showing off some loop. That will come very shortly. As soon as I'm done here. All right. Again, got to be sure I get every inch of this so that rust doesn't show up there. And that includes the handle. Right now. All right. 
far so good. Almost done. Harper's getting into these edges here. And there we go. And with that, here is our Wagner skillet lid. So, oops, a little bit more still on the edges. Again, the edges. It's always the edges. There we go. Ugh. Now, here is our Wagner skillet thing. And that's number three. Yay. Now that we've done three. Let me rinse my hands. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. We have number four. We're not quite done yet. This was an interesting one. This was cauldron. I think it's actually modern, probably from Asia or something. But nice looking cauldron nonetheless. So let's get this going. Uh, after a month in the lie, it, it looks like pretty much nothing can stand up to it. And this is hanging up rather nicely, like the other three. Inside kind of rough. Considering that this is painted, this is actually doing pretty good. Uh, looks like the inside is kind of pitted. It does not feel like there's residue, but it is kind of rough on the inside. These are rusted too. So I think I'm going to pull out the BKF again. There we go. All right. Well, as for what I'm going to be using this for, I'm still figuring that out. Again, this is one of those things where I saw it at a flea market at a decent price and figured I should pick it up. Of course, you know, it can be argued that, yeah, Halloween's coming. You probably never have too many cauldrons. <laughs> All right. A little bit on the outside. Now let's clean it up some more. It's too hot. Oh, yeah, definitely too hot. One thing I could say at least about this apartment, despite all my gripes about it, it has terrific hot water. All right, we have... So far, so good. Okay. Had a rough inside this one, so yeah. I am thinking this is probably like Asian made or something. Uh, betting it was made more as a decoration, maybe. So, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be cooking food in that. Uh, say that again in case it's too soft. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be cooking food in that. However, still turning out rather nicely. And once again, all I have to do is give it a 
one silver with a Crisco. Now see, this, does, this doesn't look so bad, does it? There we go. All right. Crisco. And then finally, on to step two, or part two. I did my rag go again. There it is. Oh, while we're at it, um, remember the uh, video where I got out the light tank? That was the one that happened to have very poor quality video and audio. My best thought was that some kind of a Windows update needed to take place because after I did that, after I did a full Windows update, uh, that problem did not reoccur. Based on the fact that I don't believe I've seen any... Um, Complaints or comments about the poor video quality tonight. Also, I better check this. There we go. I'd say we are doing pretty good tonight. All right. Almost done. Promise. Okay, now we put the outside, and whatever is extra, we will do some more on the inside. And yeah, I'm using a lot of lard, not lard, Crisco, although you could use lard, um, because again, this is not seasoning. I know the seasoning instructions are usually to get a very light coating before you bake it in the oven. I'm not going to bake this in the oven yet. This, as I said, is really just there to uh, prevent rust. So, the fact that it's a heavy coating doesn't matter because I'm going to wipe as much of it off as possible before uh, baking it in the oven and seasoning it. So, once again, edges. There on the inside. There we go. Nice. And this is good because, especially in the last month or so, I've collected a lot of cast iron junk, and I do not want it to just sit here gathering rust. I've said many times I do not want to be a hoarder, and I mean it. That's why I am going to be cleaning all of these up. I also laid down an ultimatum last week. No more cast iron until all this... This stuff is cleaned up. Hello. It's raining. It's raining. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Having done that, here is the cauldron, which was actually found by your son at Grafton. Yeah. So this doesn't look bad. Maybe maybe I'll give it to him after it's um, after this is cleaned up. Yeah. So far so good. Anyway. Here we are. Here is our cauldron. All right. That at least takes care of that. Now, and that is only the beginning. Yeah, the empty light tank is nagging me. I can't deny that. But again, all we can do is move on. So. Having done that, I can't think of anything extremely valuable that I put in there, in there anyway. At worst, I'm, why am I thinking it might actually be the uh, United We Stand joint? Well, I guess, as I said, I'll check my inventory and find out. Okay. All right. Having done all that, let's see here. Uh, oh, got a little donation here, which is very nice. Thank you, Dave Fullerton. Thank you so much. It says, a little gift for Trouble. Thank you and Jamie and the cats especially. Well, thank you so much. Hi, Trouble. Papa Dan. Hi, Trouble. Uh, have you ever heard of an Eddie's from Eddieville prison skillet? Um, prison skillets, yes. Uh, there are several kinds of uh, pans out there that were rumored to have been made in by uh, prison workers 
Uh, I can't say I know Eddieville uh, specifically. Would love to see a photo of it though. You put pans in gray bucket on August 10 and took them out on August 11. Didn't put anything in the gray bucket. Repeat, no pans in the gray bucket. Jamie, Papa Dan said there was nothing in the gray bucket. Okay. I didn't even. Okay. I didn't even remember that. Okay. That was well, you showing how to mix the lye. Okay. Right, Papa Dan? That was him, the first show, first show, yeah. and I just do the yeah. concentration. See, it says right here, you didn't put anything in gray bucket. Repeat, no pans in gray I bucket. I think there was. Okay. Well, all I can say is thank you very much. That was my panicking, Papa my Dan, bad. That was my job. You should have been watching the live. Sorry about that. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm okay. taking my laptop to the Thank you. Charge. Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, the reminder of that. Hey, so, everybody. well, which means, hey, that means we have not been robbed. Oh, <laughs> okay. After you, cool yeah, after you unbucketed the lodge pans and washed them off, you interacted with Papa's comments, but did not put any pans back into the gray Lowe's bucket. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> thank goodness. I Papa love oiling them up. Us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we also got a $5 donation for trouble, which was nice. Yeah. Oh. Bookworm, so, Jessica so T, William Hurts, Jones Adventures, and Pig guys. Tooth. Yeah. We always can use temptations. Mm hmm Definitely. Definitely. Uh, that barkeeper's friend is great stuff. I use it on all of my pans after stripping. It will take some light rust off. Absolutely. I love using barkeeper's Actually, friend. Actually, we're going to use barkeeper's friend on that, um, on the, the, Wagner. Oh, oh yeah. The Wagner? Yeah, the big, yeah, the big yeah. aluminum roaster. Oh, yeah. In a few minutes, we'll be uh, getting a look at that. Uh, Christopher Longoria, I bought a Magnolite roaster off an auction site, but it had a slight warp on the bottom. Could I fix Ooh. it with a, with slight mallet taps, or will that crack the aluminum? You know, I bet you could. I'm not, I, I know, I always say this. I am not an expert, because I'm not an expert, but... <laughs> Aluminum is a lot more pliable than cast iron. Yeah. I mean, it's more likely to dent than crack, I would think. So I might suggest... Aluminum it, warps a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, there is that. I might suggest look it up. Don't just take my word for it. My first instinct would be, I think you could be able to do it. But I would very much strongly get some advice from somebody who's worked more with aluminum on that. We call that a bean pod. I guess that was a little cauldron there. Oh. Hey, how are things going in uh, Arkansas, Mike? Okay. So anyway, that's that's all uh, so far so good. Like I said, thank you, everybody, for that reminder. So, well, that's good. That means I've got two tanks here that uh, we can uh, fill with cast iron because we are indeed about to do that. Let's move the... Uh, Let's move the uh, camera around a little more. See what we can see. Uh, here comes that roller coaster. I'm sure you folks love it when I do this. Anyway, in that case, I'll feel a little bit better about putting these beauties in there. And that, of course, would be... Ugh, let's see. Um, loot from Brimfield. As I mentioned, this was a wonderful weekend at Brimfield. The weather was picture perfect for once. <laughs> there was one day of rain on Thursday. That's pretty much inevitable. As opposed to July when Brimfield was actually flooded on Saturday and was completely washed out, but they recovered. As I said, it was picture perfect. There were thousands of people, thousands of vendors. And as you saw in the video, the cast iron, there was cast iron as far as the eye could see, if you went digging and looking for it, that is. <laughs> uh, and also, as you saw in the video, a lot of it was ridiculously priced, which again meant it was time to do some digging. Fortunately, the digging paid off. That's why we've got some uh, things to show off here that are going to go into the live tank immediately. And that includes, um, here we are. Here is the Birmingham Stove and Range handwritten skillet. Uh, let me explain handwritten. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, we've said quite a bit about BSR, Birmingham Stove and Range, and I've shown off these kind of pans before. This is their Red Mountain series, the first series of pans that uh, they produced up until the 1950s when they changed it all to the Century series. And it is, and it is believed that these pans have the ones that have their uh, size number looks like they were etched on by onto the molds by hand. 
it is believed this is the first generation of the Red Mountain series in that this could even be earlier than the 1930s. It may, although, I mean, this is just rumor based on those who've done research into BSR, including actual BSR former employees. The rumor is that this may actually go back to the 1920s. Um, they finally standardized <clears throat> their patterns and put more professional lettering on them, I think sometime in the late 30s to the 40s. So this is definitely an older BSR. 5B and X. Um, your guess is as good as mine what the X means. It could very well be like a maker's mark, you know, something to identify who actually made this. And, you know, I this is not the first time I've seen this exact inscription on a BSR pen. A couple of times I've seen it online. I actually saw another one of these exact pans at an antique mall outside of uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, when did I go on that road trip? I think it was last year. Yeah, in fact, I believe it was the same road trip where I went to Gettysburg to uh, you know, to uh, say goodbye to my mom's ashes. Um, yeah, because yeah, after that I did some sightseeing. Anyway, as I mentioned, they, this, they had this exact one, a number five size BSR with this exact same inscription on it. At that antique mall, it was selling for 20 bucks. And you know, I was indeed tempted and I walked away from it telling myself, you know, I already have two BSR number fives, even though they weren't hand scripted. Here at Brimfield, on the other hand, this one actually cost $15. So for it to cost less than an antique mall is actually pretty surprising. This came from that, uh, that uh, pair of vendors, that mom and pop, um, or more like grandpa and grandpa, and grandpa and grandma uh, vendors, the ones who had a, a table full of unmarked cast iron. And as I said, and somebody else commented as well, they were very, very nice people to talk to and to deal with. So yeah, that's why I did not mind at all paying $30 for two number fives. Uh, actually, let me get the other one. I wasn't sure if this was going to go into the line yet, but yeah, the other one I did because I showed them both and they said $30. And the other one is this nice, uh, obviously it's a lodge. This is a 1960s to 1970s lodge. You know, the very large made in USA mark identifies that. <clears throat> Main reason why I got this one is because I don't have a lodge in my collection yet that uh, has this made in USA mark. So now I do. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I wonder if that's the sign of an, of a, of an obsessed, someone who's obsessed. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but nonetheless, these two, as I said, were uh, came to $30. And at Brimfield, that was actually a pretty nice price. Also from that same uh, vendor, uh, on the table, especially as I was scanning over the video I took of it, I did notice there were several cast iron baking pans. One of them was a set, was a baking pan that looked like it had little, yeah, um, I guess like a cupcake or a muffin or a biscuit pan. And the design of that one, they looked like mini bunts. You know, they're little tiny uh, fluted, with a, even with a, a little um, um, hole, so to speak, or you know, a stick in the center so that it, if I baked with that, it would look like I was making mini uh, bunt pans. And I went back to Brimfield again on Sunday looking for that one. It was gone. Somebody else had snatched it up from them. <laughs> well, that couldn't be helped. Um, that's why, you know, as you know, if you see a bargain you, you really, really, really want, you should snatch it up right away. But kind of like as a condolence, I, uh, I ended up succumbing to temptation, and that's when I picked this up. This is, well, it's a Turk head pan. There's a reason why they call these things Turk heads, and I forget the reason. I'm, I really, really hope that there's nothing racist about the history of the name Turk head pan. I should really look that up. Uh, not that I'm trying to get into politics or political correctness. It's just unfortunate, as you know, as we all know, unfortunately... Racism does actually have some uh, effect on the history of a whole bunch of our culture, including cast iron, the history of our culture, including cast iron. Um, I won't get into that. The point being, though, is that this is a Turk head pan. And as you can see, it's nice and big. Um, 
at, I wondered if this might have been a vintage lodge, but I believe the lodge pans actually had a different shaped handle. So this is not a lodge. This is simply an unknown 19th century Turk head pan. Uh, underneath the seasoning somewhere, there is a gate mark. I saw it on the video. Oh yeah, here's one. And I think here's another one. So yeah, this is almost certainly a 19th century pan. And yeah, Jamie was thrilled to see this too. We are definitely looking forward to baking some very interesting looking cupcakes with this or cookies or other kinds of cakes. And what do we have here? Meanwhile, video looking good tonight. No major problems so far. How is your weight loss going? My weight loss actually is going pretty darn good. Um, last time I weighed myself on the other day, I weighed 188. And considering that one month ago I had bloated up to a little over 200, I'd say that's doing pretty good. What's more, today, the 15th, is exactly one month since I started this regimen, and I've been putting in 10,000 steps every day for the past month. And I feel pretty darn good from that. So, yeah, um, that's actually uh, going well as well. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, is a small cauldron used for <laughs> light spells and potions? It can be. Why not? <laughs> I don't deny that I have dabbled in the uh, pagan crowd as well. Uh, and for, if anybody is insulted by the use of the, of the term pagan or if it goes against your religion, oh, well. I'm not going to be talking about religion here. Any religious arguments you can be directed to the comments or other places. I'm not going to get into that here. Nonetheless, yes, cauldrons actually, especially around Halloween, are we're pretty well known for, uh, for that. On the other, other hand, cauldrons, of course, are outstanding cast iron cookers and Dutch ovens. And it's really, really great to cook in a cauldron if you have one. <laughs> All right. Peg tooth. Made it. Sorry that I'm late. Well, that's not a problem. As you can see, once again, we're running, well, pretty late here. Nonetheless, we've cleaned out a, uh, we've cleaned out one light tank. I mistakenly thought somebody had stolen from the other light tank, but the folks here corrected me and pointed out the other light tank was empty anyway. So we are doing pretty good. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, the next thing that I also came across, not from the same friendly vendor, but just I happen to find a good deal on this one. And that is an ugly, an ugly hammered number eight. Um, you know, because of the very, very crude hammered mark and the fact that it is, this is heavy. This has got to be heavier than a lodge. This thing is so thick. Um, it is, and it sits dead flat. It is definitely not warped. I can only imagine what it would take to warp this thing. Also, one other clue is the shape of the handle here. It's got this little, as you can see, this little groove on the on the bottom and also on the top, as well as the uh, number eight inscribed. And on the bottom, there's always like a period or dot or something here. Um, all of these, especially because of the pattern, the crude pattern, definitely show this is an ugly hammer. Yeah, there's nothing ugly about it. Well, they only call it ugly just because it does look crude, and there is no denying that. Yeah, uh, I already have an ugly number three and a number five, and I really kind of got this to uh, complete my set so that I have a three, five, and an, and an eight. And once this is cleaned up, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> I've got so many number eights right now, it's, gonna, it's hard to put another one into rotation. Maybe I'll do a giveaway with that one. It's hard to say. Uh, hey, everybody. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me check the rest of these comments here. Okay. Not baking soda, washing. Uh, uh, what else are we saying? I bet you can make some very nice mini torch shells in that pan. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, too. Uh, you can make Asian dumplings in that turk head pan. Turk head pans make great food tart baits. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again in, in regards to the uh, weight loss. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paw Paw Dan, not baking soda, washing powder only. Oh, you're talking about building an e-tank, aren't you? Yes, you are correct. Uh, you need washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, not sodium bicarbonate, which is, of course, baking soda. Uh, washing soda sells for like maybe $3 or $4 in the laundry detergent aisle at most supermarkets. It is very easy to find. 
Uh, Griswold, what brand? Oh, yeah, lovely. Uh, ugly Hammered. Yes, exactly. That was an Ugly Hammered. So uh, give him his gifts, quite possibly. Hey, Mr. Cast Iron, hope all is well. We are and hope you are feeling better. Yeah, we hope we hope everybody's feeling better. I know that, uh, yeah, it's been uh, t it's been kind of tough. <laughs> I I have heat ring in my lodge pan. Lodge put heat rings on their pans up until about the 80s, I think, when they finally removed them. But you can always tell a lodge, well, almost always, but usually the lodge will have a notch or three notches in the heat ring. So, anyway, that was the ugly hammer, which means now we get to show off the prize. And that, of course, would be, oof, oh, this is heavy, than, heavier than you might think. Here it is. The cast iron bunt pan that I found for twenty dollars. Oh my gosh! I still can't believe it. I showed Jamie the video this morning of showing the scene why I actually found that thing, and you saw—I mean, you could see my hands were shaking as I was holding that thing, and I was struggling trying to check that uh, price tag, and then I had to double check it. Does this thing really say thirty-five dollars? <laughs> It had a label on it that said Nordic Wear. This is not aluminum. You can tell from the weight, this is definitely cast iron. And furthermore, it's not steel. Uh, I don't think they've, I've ever seen a thick steel pan. Cast iron, yes, but steel is usually thinner. So this is absolutely a cast iron cake pan. You know, technically, it's not even a bunt pan. I could get on with that, how Nordic Wear copyrighted the word bunt. Uh, but nonetheless, these kind of uh, pans they were making, especially in Europe, since at least the 19th century. And I have been so looking forward to finding one something like this because it's shaped differently from a standard bunt pan. And so I am so looking forward to cleaning this one up. You better believe it's going in the light in just a few minutes. And bake, and so that we'll, I'll be able to bake with this as well as with my other bunt pan. In fact, this means... I've been actually considering this. So now, thanks to this, I have three bunt pans. I have this, I have the modern lodge bunt pan from a couple of years ago, and I have a vintage bunt pan, which I think is a recast. That was the original bunt pan that I first scored. And I'm thinking when it gets close to Christmas, I'm probably going to do a giveaway and give away that bunt pan because I don't need three of them. Since now I have one in a different shape, I'll be able to have one bunt pan shaped like this and one shaped like this. There is a Facebook group called Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous, and they actually give names to these kind of models. I forget what kind of name this, this actually is, but I will look and see. So anyway, yeah, that was the bunt pan that, oh man, this thing was... This probably ranks up with the discovery of my 15-gallon cauldron, at Brim, which was also at Brimfield a few years ago. That's how excited I am about this. And I was astounded that, yeah, again, it was at that price. So uh, had a quick look, and Turk head pan is just the shape was thought to resemble the turban head covering the Turkish, that Turkish men wore in old times. Well, that's good to know. I'm actually very pleased about that. Ugh, I mean, I don't, as I said, I don't want to get into politics. And as you know, unfortunately, there are some aspects, including cooking, where racism raised its ugly head and left a mark. Unfortunately, if this is not the case, I'm very, very glad. So thank you very much for the uh, advice on that. Shadow, uh, do I see this like? I can't even read this. Oh, Shadow. Yeah, I should have known that. Shadow Walker XM. So thank you. Thank you again for that. Okay. I really like that. Yeah, that was a great find. Well, yeah, I, I, I can only call that sheer luck. There's no way I can actually say, you know, and I had some kind of a talent. That was sheer luck that I discovered that one. Sitting next to a vintage lodge bunk pen, nonetheless. So now that I've talked enough, Let's get these things in the lie. How about that? And hey, we've got two lie tanks to fill. So I think we're uh, doing pretty good here. That means let's get these in. Better get my gloves back on. All right. There we go. So now you get to see my feet. How nice. 
and just got to be careful here. Oops, wrong one. There's one. And you know what? I think I better rinse this one out, actually, because like I said, I think I got a little bit of lye in it. It'll be wet, but I can live with wet. I mean, big deal, so my hand gets wet. <laughs> All right, there we go. That should help. There we go. That's number two. Now, let's get going. Uh, how to do this? I should probably, well, actually, you know, this is a very, that is a very high water level for that, isn't it? I mean, it's going to overflow when I put those things in there. I have little doubt about that. So, maybe I should actually uh, dump a little bit of it. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Um, hmm. Okay, let's take this and scoop a little bit up. Put it over here carefully. There you go, that's pretty good. Now, let's do the important one first. Ugh, and that would be the bunt pan. Because I'm not wasting any time in cleaning this one up. There we go. And that actually fit pretty, pretty nicely. So that's one. Number two probably be the turk head pan. Hope it'll fit. Doesn't fit. Okay. Let's put the turk head pan in here. Yeah. Oh, not. Oh, good grief. Okay. That was bad. Well, I'm going to have to wash this up. That's for sure. In fact, it's a little awkward because a little bit of it is sticking out. So, hmm. I'm going to have to find some other way to clean this up. This thing's actually too big for a bucket. Well, that bites. All right. Well, I'll figure something out. Okay, then in that case, let's try another big thing. Let's just to see if this one will fit. This would be the ugly. And this... Still now. Careful, careful. Yeah, I have an idea. Let's. Uh, nope, still now. Okay. Move this. Let's take the butt pan. Put it on its side. Let's see if it fits now. Here we go. And we just barely got it. There. That's two. Those were the hard ones. Here's the uh, BSR. Let's see if we can get this one to fit. There we go. That's three. And having done that, what do we do next? Hold on. There we go. Okay, we've done three. Let's see if we, oh, I think I know what else I could fit in there. Let me dig through this pile here. This one came from my New York trip. Here's an Asian made lid, but a very nice sized one. Probably like a number seven size instead of the usual smaller lid. And hey, if the lid fits, wear it. Here we go. So we've got that one in there. So far, so good. Okay. Hey, we've managed to fit all of these things in. The, uh, as I said, the Turk head does not fit. So let's see what else we can put in. Uh, looks like I get to show off a couple of other finds. And, that, and again, that would be for my New York trip. So... How about this? Not one, but two John Wright pans. 
Here is a John Wright animal cracker mold, which I managed to score at a flea market in New York for about, I think this one was $10. So, yeah, let's see if we could take a look. And also you can look this one up online as well. This again is the John Wright animal cracker mold, which I'm looking forward to using this to make animal crackers. After all, I do have a godson. This end, oh yeah, this one fits with no difficulty at all. And now from here, here is a John Wright Santa Claus or sleigh sled mold. So yeah, I did pretty good with these things, I think, in New York. I definitely did not do as good at the uh, Bougville Antique Week that I did at Brimfield. This one, there you go, it fits. So far, so good. That's two. Let's see. Oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. The floor is the floor so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you dump them all the corners. Yeah. Trouble. So trouble caused trouble then, in other words. He knocked over the... Yep, he, he knocked over the treats. How nice. Yeah. Would an aquarium bubbler help in a lie tank? Mm, I'm not so sure. Uh, lie tank is really because of the chemical reaction of dissolving the uh, dissolving the organic material in there. And I don't think really a bubbler would help. What does help a lie tank is heat. Doing this in the summer has is much more effective than doing this in the winter. It still works during the winter, but it's much, much more slowly. I know a couple of times I've just left my lie tank out during for the whole winter and then emptied them out in the spring. At least once I did find a couple of pieces I'd forgotten about and left them in all and left them in all winter. That's how long can you keep re, uh, reusing lime mixture until you feel that it's not working very well. Basically, if it gets so full of crud that it seems like it's not actually uh, dissolving the uh, seasoning off, in which case you can strain it. And then you can just throw more lye into the tank. Uh, it's not, it's really not an exact science. You can, in, in fact, increase the, um, what's the word, I guess? The, uh, oh, I can't even think of it. Solute, well, anyway, the percentage of lye in the water by adding more lye to it. So I don't think that should be a uh, problem. Do you have any of the stoves that they use to uh, put the large cauldrons in? Uh, I do not. I only have a cheap electric stove. I really have very limited access to any kind of outdoor cooking at all. That was one reason why I really had to debate with myself whether or not I should get that big cauldron, which I do not regret getting, of course. <laughs> do you see the dog face on the split mat behind you? Split mat? Um... Well, these, these are paper bags for the record. <laughs> so if they if it made a dog phase, well, <laughs> congratulations. I think I see it if you mean down there. Um, yeah, then there we go. It's almost like raw shock. <laughs> Do you have three buckets to pour lye into? I could get a third bucket if I wanted to. Maybe I should try again, I suppose, with that turk head pan. Please don't make an aspic in that bunt pan. Uh, no, no, not to worry. I'm going to use that bunt pan for baking. I can absolutely guarantee that. Let's see. Meanwhile, while I'm waiting, um, let's see if we can throw this one in, shall we? Uh, on top of everything else, what do we have here? But hey, look at this. Yet another number eight. This one, in fact, is a lodged three notch. Uh, it has an SK mark, so this is likely from the 1950s to 1960s. I got this one as part of a deal at the uh, flea market, which I kind of regret, because he did this plus a Wagner plus that uh, Asian lid. And I, even though I checked that Wagner for cracks and thought it was okay, I found a crack in that Wagner tonight. So I'm kind of bummed out about that, but so it goes. Let's do this nice and slow. Let's see if we can make this fit. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to fit. It doesn't look like it's going to fit, does it? All right. Oh, no, it fit. So 
Now this one won't. Rat. Okay. We gotta figure something out here. Maybe if I. Ah, whatever. Fortunately, I'm on the first floor here, and the only thing below this is the basement, so all I gotta do is mop this up afterwards. Maybe if I. Carefully. Damn it. Let's see if I can do this right. Okay, there. And. Come oh, on. I may actually have to get a third tank. This is too big, isn't it? Okay, so much for that number eight. Well, then, I've got one more thing. This is yet another one that I'm going to be using as a giveaway. And let me dig that one out. For 10 bucks, I found a nice BSR cornbread skillet with the, pat with the patent pending mark on it. I figure I might as well uh, do a uh, giveaway with this one as well. And that should be enough to uh this should be small enough to fit in here and there we go just barely but i think we've got it all right uh, all right let's get these things out of the way again oh yeah so how did you spend your wednesday night oh just fine just fine i i just uh dissolved the uh flesh off my hands with lye and no, I did not dissolve the flesh off my hands. I'm just saying. Uh, a little bit of steam, that's all, unfortunately. But those are the hazards of uh, cleaning cast iron. You just have to be careful. In fact, you have to be more careful than, I, than I've been tonight. <laughs> all right. Having said that, well, nonetheless, I guess we got it. Here we are. So we've got our... Uh, lie tank at least and we do have several pieces in there you know we i mean i was not able to, did i fit the ugly in there uh i think i did okay so we've got the ugly in there we've got the bunt we've got a couple of number fives uh we've got a couple of john wright pans and we even have a cornbread skillet so that's not bad plastic totes uh, if I'm a newbie. Well, hello, iron leather wood. I, yeah, what a mess. Yeah, tell me about it. I've got to uh, mop up here, but hey, at least the floor is going to be clean after this. That much I could say. So once I get these things out, all I really need to do is just mop it up. So this isn't so bad. And fortunately, again, this is a this is a first floor apartment. So there's no worry about it leaking it into the apartment below me. Now, let me just do one other thing. And reseal these. Yeah. This thing's sealed very nicely, so I'm, now I'm not worried that anything's going to happen. Hello, weak type. There we go. This one is in nice and solid. Now for the other one. And I'm glad to know that... I was not robbed. <laughs> On the other hand, shit. I bet you can see that. That's the line actually reaching up to the top. Well, that should hold it. That should make a nice seal. So there we go. They are in. Now I think I've got one more thing to do before I clean up these two here. I mean, these things have water here. So yeah, I really want these things to rust, don't I? <laughs> Okay, now that we've done that, let's do one last thing, and I think we are all set for this evening. Okay, and here's the last thing. What works better, lye or vinegar? Definitely lye. Lye does a fantastic job. It's slow, but, but if you have patience, lye can dissolve almost any buildup or organic crud on your uh, cast iron. Uh, it does not remove rust. If you have a rusty pan and you put it in the lye tank, it will still be rusty. Lye does not affect cast iron. That's why it's so great to be able to just throw your pans in the lye tank and leave them there until you're ready. You can leave it in there for weeks or months if you want. I mean, as I said, the, these pans here, let me, it's time to move my uh, view. These pans here, 
were in fact in that lie tank for a month before I took them out and cleaned them up. And they're actually looking pretty good at this point, I have to say. I've actually had these on the uh, stove top here. So yeah, they're a little hot. I've already burned myself once, so I think I will actually remember to use a pot holder. How about that? Here is the uh, favorite once again, with its uh, sulfur pitting, unfortunately, but still, here is a favorite. Here is the Wagner skillet lid. And here is the Wagner Sydney, the Wagner quotes. So far, so good. And now, let's do one last thing before we call it a night. And let's look at something that's not cast iron. Here it is. I do not have this on the heat. I can pick it up in my hands. Here we go. I, this was the other incredible find. I mean, I was certainly not expecting to make two once-in-a-lifetime finds at Brimfield. This, I have to admit, was sheer luck, but man, it's when they offered, I mean, I saw this thing lying on the ground, and yeah, my jaw dropped. I took some pictures of it and a little bit of video. <clears throat> let me move the cat, let me move this around again. I took some uh, pictures of uh, this and a little bit of video, and then just for uh, ha-has, oops, where did this go? Hold on, let me get a better view of that. There we are. And a little bit of uh, video. That's better. And just for ha-has, I asked, how much are you selling it for? 40 bucks. <sighs> I was wearing a mask there. Otherwise, they would have seen my jaw drop. <laughs> I mean, this. Yeah, this for 40 bucks yeah the is even better <laughs> yeah well maybe yes no it is better yes but still this for 40 bucks i was expecting them to say something like 200 and you point out that the lodge right next to it was oh shit this is yeah. all lion for is yeah it? I'm, I'm going to watch it up i will oh, I I it real quick. it'll be okay it's very very diluted all you really need to do is wash your feet. If you want to, just like use a, uh, you know, a uh, face cloth or something, it'll be fine. Anyway, yeah, forty bucks. I mean, I mean, as you, yeah. Okay, let me uh, here. Let's take a look at the uh, underside of this. Here we are, and it says Wagner Ware Sydney two six nine, and it even has a patent date patent date on the bottom. This is why I think this actually is from the 1920s. Patented December 4, 1917, February 10, 1920, MCH, whatever. Oh, March 8, 1921, March 14, 1922. This is why I think this actually is from, from the 20s, maybe even the 30s. It does not even say Magnolite. Um, let's look at the bottom here. Oh, yeah. It even still had a trivet. So, yeah, but let's take a look at the bottom, which, again, does not say Magnolite. It only says Wagner Ware Oval Roaster 269. So, this was even before they introduced their Magnolite line. I mean, we have seen, as you know, there are a lot of Wagner Ware Magnolite roasters out there, both the round aluminum Dutch ovens, which one of which I have, and the uh, oval roasters, which are also very nice. I've seen them in a couple of times at a flea market only recently. I've seen those bigger ones selling for as little as $15. I turned it down because I had no use for it. But... Anyway, those ones there were made actually from between the 1960s and the 1980s. They were deliberately made with a vintage vintage look, which is fine. You know, the, the company could do whatever they wanted. But um, because of that, as you know, those things sell on eBay at inflated prices. You can get the large roaster usually for like between $150 to $200. <laughs> That's why I was expecting this 
to uh, go for a price of about $200. And I could not believe it, $40. I mean, I, I couldn't get the money out fast enough. So, yeah, no, there was no, absolutely no way I could possibly pass this up. Now that I have it, what to do with it? I mean, I have made my holiday dinners all in cast iron, and I'm going to continue doing so. Well, I've already promised my friend Mama Bear. I think I've told Yeah, you've, you've seen her in my video, Mama Bear. The mother of my godson, in fact. Uh, she uh, does, for Christmas each year, she does a really nice perineal, a uh, roasted pork shoulder. She does not have a cast iron roaster, but... When I showed this to her, she would love to borrow it to uh, cook her Christmas dinner in. It sounds good to me. So it looks like we've got a plan there. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I can only chalk it up to luck that, again, we, that, uh, we, that we made, I made two practically life-changing scores at Brimfield. Now, I've been to Brimfield many times now. Uh, you know, at least once or twice per year for the past several years. And I'm still not tired of it. It's still a lot of fun. I highly, highly recommend it if anybody has the uh, uh, chance to go. Some years at Broomfield, I have barely found anything, barely got anything at all. Even so, just going there and uh, watching is fun. All right, let me move over here and let's, let me look at a couple more comments before we, before we uh, shut down for the evening. And we will uh, continue from there. Oh yeah, there's here's my weight loss so far. And there's more cast iron in the background too. See, told you there would be cast iron tonight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Glock thirty fan will be great at Thanksgiving. Volks, uh, Vol uh, Volksworks Garage, nineteen twenty five Wagnerware pre Magnolite script logo, huh? My jaw just dropped over your Wagnum aluminum roaster. So did mine. But as I said, I could not believe it. I'd never even seen photos of that before. I only cook in cast iron. Everything cooked in, is cooked in cast iron here. And I don't blame you at all, Mr. Bing 70. I have made a couple of exceptions for aluminum now, as you can see. Because aluminum actually does have some advantages. My aluminum pot is the best water boiler I've ever used. So... <laughs> However, for just about everything else, I am using cast iron, yes. It looks so clean. Bet it was a wedding gift and spent decades in the back of a cupboard. You're probably right. That would certainly explain a lot, wouldn't it? Uh, I picked up a similar oval roaster, but smaller, and it says Wagner Ware, stylized with Magnolite um, in, uh, in cursive, 1930s. Now, that's, the one, that's exactly the one I'm talking about. Those are, were made between the 1960s and the 1980s. They were intentionally designed with to, a, to look vintage, with something like an Art Deco type of look. That's why they have that kind of a lid on them. They're actually from the 60s to the 80s. And there's nothing wrong with that. After all, the 60s are not as new as they used to be. The 60s are, good God, 60 years ago? Oh, I feel old. So, yeah, that is, yeah, you can still call that a vintage piece. But as I said, it's not from the 30s. It's actually from the 60s to maybe the 80s. That's quite different from that oval roaster, though I will say that. I thought aluminum could cause cancer. Uh, okay. Number one, aluminum does not cause cancer. So, no, there's nothing to worry about. Number two, the rumors, and they're only rumors and scare stories, that have been going for about the past 50 years since the 70s is that aluminum contributes to Alzheimer's. And this is not true. I will say that with a straight face. I did a video on that, in fact. I would like to reassure everybody based on, you know, I did my research. You know, they say, you should research. I did my research. And I did a video, in fact, that actually states that aluminum cookware does not cause Alzheimer's disease. I will say that with a straight face. I have backed that up with references. There are references, there are actual links to uh, the data that uh, show it. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, you can't prove a negative. You know, you cannot say, I mean, this study shows it does not cause Alzheimer's. However, the way it works is 
in the 1970s, there were a couple of studies that suggested a possible link between aluminum and Alzheimer's, including instances where it seemed as though the brains of some um, exhumed or autopsied Alzheimer's patients had, had uh, buildups of aluminum. Some, not all, but some. Since then, sci scientists, the medical industry, universities, hospitals, companies, what have you, no, not just big pharma. We're talking like pretty much medical groups worldwide have been doing studies to try to confirm this. They have not been able to do so. The only conclusion that they've come to is that, well, two conclusions, is that so far all of the studies that they have done trying to find some kind of a link between aluminum cookware, aluminum cans, deodorant, you know, which use antiperspirant, which uses a lot of aluminum. None of those seem to have had any real link to Alzheimer's. And that's really just it. They, I mean, all they can tell is that there is, does not seem to be a link. All they know is that as far as any link between aluminum, and Alzheimer's, more study is still needed. They have not found a smoking gun. They have not found any kind of a substantial link. Studies have been done and then uh, some studies have been disproven. Some have been updated. We have not gotten anywhere. It is n this is different from cigarettes, asbestos, thalidomide, those things that were, that were absolutely proven to cause things like cancer or the, or, or the like. That's not the case with aluminum. As far as the aluminum buildup in the brains of uh, some autopsy patients, there's a possibility that it's the other way around. The Alzheimer's may have uh, contributed to the aluminum buildup rather than the aluminum buildup contributing to the Alzheimer's. As I said, I did a video on this and on that video, I have references. I have links that I encourage you to follow as a starting point. I am not going to say, point to this video. This is the absolute proof you need that this is a neurotoxin that will, that will cause Alzheimer's. No, it does not do that. So let me just, again, I will repeat this as many times as I have to, not just tonight, but as many times as I need to, <clears throat> that based on the research that I've seen, aluminum cookware does not cause Alzheimer's. If it turns out to be wrong, then I'm wrong. But so far, 50 years of research have not shown it. Okay, so much for that little sermon. I hope that helps. <laughs> coffee and a Pyrex glass coffee percolator. That's Mr. Bing. <clears throat> Want to go shopping with me in the near future? I could use your luck. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's, I can only say that was sheer luck. I do not have any other word for it. <laughs> I got uh, Phil's, Phil's full strength toothpaste from local West Marine, $27. It's great on Pyrex and aluminum. Oh, okay. I've also heard that you can use Barkeeper's friend to uh, clean aluminum. I'm going to give that a try on the roaster. So <laughs> bare aluminum quickly forms an impenetrable oxide. No one has to worry if you don't use metal instruments. There is that too. Aluminum is softer than cast iron and metal utensils can scratch it. So we don't recommend it. Um, <clears throat> best to use wooden utensils or silicone on, uh, with aluminum for that reason. So anyway, having said all that, uh, let me see. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, CLU less, I guess. <laughs> Uh, okay. You can polish it and that, yeah, that really pretty much covers it. I think, as I said, I've been going on and on and we've gone an hour and a half again. <laughs> so I can only hope you've enjoyed this. I've got to mop up the floor and get these things out of here. <laughs> um, but this has been a fun evening. I think, I mean, on, as I said, I had that little scare and I turned out to be wrong and I'm glad to be wrong. Nobody stole from my lie tag. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> we got to uh, take those things out of the lye we'll, and I'll be seasoning those pans, put some stuff in the lye and yeah, I'm going to be taking that, uh, that bunt pan out as soon as I can and keep putting it through its paces. I am so looking forward to using that. <laughs> and yes, there will be a video of it. 
So I hope you folks have seen enough cast. No, I don't think you've seen enough cast iron tonight, <laughs> but I hope you've seen a lot of cast iron tonight. <clears throat> My throat's getting dry. All of that, I guess, is a sign, uh, unless you use the scratch-free BKF. Well, yes, yeah, BKF, I mean, the uh, powdered stuff. You could make a slurry. And also, BKF does have a softer cleaner, especially for enamel, too. Could give that a try. All right. Having said that, all that, I guess I better close this the way I close it every night. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I mean, as I said before, these, these live these live videos are so much fun and I enjoy doing them because of you, because of you folks coming by and commenting and chatting and pointing out uh, what an imbecile I am for doing things like getting lye on my hand and getting splashing it all over the floor and thinking that I was being stolen from and all kinds of fun stuff like that and trouble knocking over the, uh, the treats and stuffing himself. So, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it will continue being a lot of fun because I have no intention of stopping this at any time soon. Not as long as folks keep showing up. So I can always say thank you very much. I've enjoyed myself. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I mean, good grief. After an hour and a half, we still have 62 people watching. So I think we are doing pretty good. Anyway, thank you. And thank you once again, everybody. And as I said before, you know, this is a quote from 2001. Yeah, that's why I like saying it. Wednesday.